page 219 for the order of matches. Please stand.
And now invite any children forward for a special message.
When me, dad, and Abihu had the Holy Spirit come upon them, and it was reported to Moses, Moses had a wish that all men had the Spirit come upon them. Pentecost is a celebration that this wish of Moses comes true. The Spirit of God comes upon all men. We read it. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men and the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him. And took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp. One named Eldad and the other named Pegad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Edad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, who assisted to Moses from his youth, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. And Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our epistle reading comes to us from the second chapter of Acts, the first 21 verses, beginning on page 1165. And this reading is our Pentecost story, where the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples to proclaim God's truth in different languages. And then when the opportunity presented itself, Peter stood up to deliver a Christian sermon about what has happened and what happened in when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of the fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues of the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, without men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Sidi, and visitors from Rome. Both Jews and proselytes speaking to the Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking them said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs of the earth below. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. O Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand for the God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter, verses 37 through 39, of page 11 to 44. And on the final day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus cries out that everyone should come to him and believe the belief for wells of living water will come out of him. John then tells us that Jesus is what Jesus is referring to. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, who those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit has not been given, because Jesus was not yet given. O Lord, have mercy on us. And we 
continue our worship with the common responsory on page 221 in our hymn.
It even flowed to an apostle he called Paul, who once persecuted the church and approved of Stephen's martyrdom. No matter what the early opponents did to the early Christians, whether they would become shipwrecked, or beat with rods, or kicked out of town, or thrown into prison, or stoned, or even killed, the Holy Spirit continued to flow. back to Michael Scott. He gets all excited about this youth trip to Mexico to build a school. His heart is bursting with joy. But finally, 45 minutes later, he realizes what a rash and foolish decision he had made. And he tries to get the bus to stop so that they could leave him on the side of the road. After coming down from that top, he has nothing to offer on this trip. And he wants out and off the bus. Have any of us reached that point in our faith life? We've had the high of getting the Holy Spirit into our lives, but now that high is over. Are there still rivers of living water flowing out of your heart, or are you trying to get off the bus? Do people hear and see Jesus through you? Is the Holy Spirit drawing people to Jesus through you? Or do people see something else? Do people see Jesus? Or do they just see an old curmudgeon constantly complaining? Do people see the joy of Christ in you? Or do they see someone who's just trying to count down their final seconds? Do people see faithfulness in you? Or will we just not see you until September? Does the joy, hope, and peace of the Holy Spirit bubble up from you? Or does the mundaneness of life permeate everything you do? Is Jesus a gift to be shared with others? Or is he someone you hold to yourself and don't want anyone else to come to you? Him? I realize life is full of peace and balance. Up and down my goes to this world. It happens in our faith life, up and down, great, not so great, good, bad, easy, difficult. That's the reality of living in this world. But do people see the same Jesus in you? Does the Holy Spirit flow out of your hearts the same when you're on top as when you're on the bottom? Or do the emotions and the, the gravity of the situation always trump everything else? Do the fruits of the Spirit grow free, freely in your life? You know the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Are those the fruits of our life? Or do more people see the works of the flesh? Let's give a good example. Someone cuts you off on the road. And you say, oh man, that person needs to be forgiven. Or does something nasty come off about them? Are you quick to share your faith? Or quick to hide it? Would you rather talk with people about Jesus or the hot political item in the world? Would you rather share Jesus with others or would you rather they hear your world evil? And this is where I really struggle with our text from John 7. What does it mean if rivers of living water aren't flowing out of my heart? Does that mean the Holy Spirit isn't dwelling in me? Do I have to do something to, to turn it back on again? Or what does my life say about the lack of an overflowing spirit in my daily life? Well, first off, we have to say you know you have the Holy Spirit because you have faith in no one can say Jesus is born except by the power of the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus can actually do whoever believes in me out of his heart will come to the wall. Even though your life may not look like it should, the Holy Spirit has to come. You're here because you believe that Jesus died in the Holy Spirit. If that's only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes, our sinful selves get in the way. It gets in everyone's way. There will be times and moments when the rivers of living water will flow out of your heart like a wide open fire hydrant. But other times, like a leaky faucet, rip, rip, rip. And in either case, the Holy Spirit is still there. Those living water are still coming out. And the good 
good news, those living waters aren't dependent on you. They're not dependent upon how you feel. The Holy Spirit hasn't abandoned you when the excitement has gone down. It doesn't take the Michael Scott approach. Here one minute, gone the next. Rather, because of the Holy Spirit, we gather around God's Word in worship and our devotion life so that we can stay connected to the source of the living God. For the Spirit of God works through God's Word. He calls us to Himself through that precious Word. The Spirit continues to point you to Jesus over and over again. God baptizes you with water and the Word and the power of the Holy Spirit. He proclaims both his law and gospel so that you grow through your faith in his word. And when we make mistakes, the Holy Spirit takes you to the place that you need to be through his word, to the foot of the cross. When you are, where you are reminded of how much God truly loves you, that he was willing to die on the cross to forgive you. And when he comes back to the cross, you can be sure you still have that Holy Spirit. And that Spirit will never leave. But rather, the Spirit will keep those rivers of living water flowing from your heart. We now continue our worship by singing our next hymn, 497. Tell the Holy Ghost, God of God.
We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and the life of everlasting. Amen. We now turn to him 941 for our canticle. We praise you and acknowledge you, O God.
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, 3,000 souls were called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified. Likewise, fill our congregation, our synod, and the whole Christian church on earth with the Holy Spirit. Renew us that the sacraments may be administered faithfully, and many more would be called by the gospel, enlightened with your gifts, sanctified and kept in the one true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted in death for our sins and raised for our justification. And in him shall all the nations of the earth be united. Give us pastors who will preach the truth faithfully and church workers and teachers who are devoted to your service. We especially pray for your guidance and search for a teacher. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have promised that all who drink from your living water will well up to eternal life. Help us show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and live with love toward our neighbor. Remove all pride, prejudice, and hate, that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel shamefully, but give welcome to all people in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, we give thanks for those who have served our nation through military service, and we remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us in the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liberty responsibly. Keep safe all who travel. Bless our nation and help us to protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow us, looking always to you, from whom these gifts come. Lord, in your mercy. Light of this dark world, you have sent the Holy Spirit to your church as the comforter. Soothe the wounds of your people. According to your will, bring restoration to broken families. Heal the sick. Uplift the depressed. Provide for the poor. Uphold the forgotten. And answer the prayers of all who call out to you for aid. Especially... Eileen, Stacy, Leroy, David, Jerry, Helen, Carol, Helen, Marilyn, Florence, Linda, Shirley, Bridge, Elmer, Marion, Iona. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, giver of the Holy Spirit, give comfort and hope to all who mourn the loss of loved ones, including the family of Harold. Show them the truth that death is defeated in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune, and defend us against every error that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace, for us by his death obtain eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, You've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings be ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we remain standing for our closing hymn, 500, Creator Spirit by Whose Aid.
seated. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we gather around God's Word on this Pentecost Sunday as we're reminded that the Holy Spirit is in us and it comes out in us in rivers of living water from our heart. A couple of announcements. The ladies of Trinity are collecting gently used Bibles and devotions and, and Christian materials. There's a box out there for, uh, for a mission work around the world, so please feel free to leave anything you have in that box. Um, any other announcements? None? Then let's conclude with the Bible verse of the month. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. God's blessings to you this week.